If you're new to this place, you might not have noticed on your way in the gate this morning that you pass beneath two flags. They are the flag of the Episcopal Church and the flag of the Anglican Communion. And if I may, friends, I know it's hot. I know the Tour de France is about to arrive down the Champs-Élysées. I know all that. But give me just a moment, if you will, to talk about those two things briefly. Two weeks ago, together with eight people from across Europe, lay people and ordained people, I was in Baltimore, Maryland, for the General Convention of the Episcopal Church, this incredible every three-year extravaganza, this democratic craziness by which we govern this Church of God. Now, I want you to know that I am about to say these words in the presence of two of my colleagues in the House of Bishops, the Bishop of Arizona and the Bishop of Vermont. And one of the most important rules about being a bishop is that you never presume to speak for anybody other than yourself. But I think my colleagues in ministry will agree with me when I say that at our convention, we did the thing that Episcopalians always do. We disagreed about important things. And we did so this time in a spirit of amazing comedy, not comedy, comedy, of deep and authentic listening, of careful consideration, of embracing views that were different from our own, of listening to each other on very difficult topics. What the church should say about the climate emergency, what we should say to the world about our understanding of reproductive rights and the sanctity of life and the tension between those two ideas, what we should say about the right of gay and lesbian people to be married. We did all of this with considerable compassion toward each other. And I would say a model of how to disagree and be in communion across difference. This Tuesday, I will be leaving and going to Lambeth for the Lambeth Conference. And so now I come to that other flag. The Lambeth Conference is the gathering of bishops from all 42 churches in the Anglican Communion that are in communion with the Archbishop of Canterbury. It is a group that is one of the so-called instruments of communion in this interesting third largest global gathering of Christianity we have. And we had been told, as we prepared to come to this meeting, that because we know we disagree about important things in this communion, the purpose of this gathering was to be consultative and dialogical. Less than a week ago, we all received a message from the Archbishop sending along to us a series of ten short theological papers that we'd be asked to consider and, as it turns out, expected to vote on when we arrive in Lambeth. You may have seen these papers. And if you have not, I will just tell you that some of what is in them is very good and worth your attention. And in a paper on the subject of human dignity, there are things in there we ought to pay attention to. An acknowledgement that this church has a history in colonialism and a condemnation of practices of enslavement and human trafficking, a recognition that people live in great poverty in ways that injure their dignity. And then comes the expectation that we will restate a 24-year-old definition of marriage as between only a man and a woman. Now, dear friends, if you are, if you remember nothing else of what I say this morning, I want you to remember this. If you are here in this space or listening to us on the internet or watching this later, hear me say this clearly. The Episcopal Church has come through 40 years of conversation, debate, dispute, and reconciliation 
over the full ministry of gay and lesbian people in this church. And nothing about the conversation about to be had will in any way harm the covenant we have made with our gay and lesbian and transgender brothers and sisters. We will go to that conversation. We will cross that bridge, knowing that on the other side of it awaits for us a gathering of a different kind of potential violence, not physical, but yes, spiritual. We will pray before we go. And we will ask, and ask, and ask again that we be heard. That is all we will ask for. But we will not fail to ask for.